live. <clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's canine educator. So last night, me and my bud, Thompson, were out for a walk. And this video is to just tell you guys what to do if you're ever approached. Uh, we were approached last night by an off-leash dog, and luckily... Um, things weren't as bad as they could have been. Uh, we were out for a walk in the evening and we were just walking and somebody opened up their door and sure enough, out comes uh, just like a puppy, probably eight, nine month old black lab. Uh, the dog came, my dog, Thompson, who's the St. Bernard, he's an intact, almost 10 year old male. He's around dogs all day long, his whole life. He's particular about the dogs he likes. Uh, I can tell you 100% that he definitely doesn't like dogs approaching them that fast that he doesn't know. So they got into it. Um, I had my other dog, Lakota, with me. Luckily, I was able to put her into a downstay. Um, something that I do on a regular basis, uh, working with dogs, you know, just watching their behavior, seeing what's going on. So I put her into a down. I came up. I, what I'm going to tell you guys, what you're going to benefit from this is what to do if an off-leash dog approaches you in general, and then also possibly how to break up a quick squall or a dog fight. Um, so they latched onto each other, um, just because they're probably two males and it was very chaotic. Um, but before I move forward, this is hundred percent, neither my dog's fault or the other dog's fault. This is a hundred percent the owner's fart, fart, <laughs> no bad dogs, the owner's fault. Um, so anyway, so like this video as we, as we continue to go so other people can jump on. Um, but basically the dog came running out and I lifted my dog up. So I caught my dog and I, I basically used my shoulder and I lifted him up because if you elevate the, here, I'll tell you why you elevate the dog completely up. Um, so they're, they're basically both up in the air. And then what you do, uh, is you, and I told, uh, Taylor who was with me at the time, I said, Taylor, and, 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 and what my dog does is does this, and he doesn't lash and he doesn't like rebite or anything. He just grabbed the dog and the other dog's trying to grab me and grab. And so again, this is an off leash dog completely ran up to him and just bombarded him and jumped on him. And any dog in their right mind would turn around and do the same thing and react really quick. So he latched on, I just lifted him up. Uh, he let go. Uh, the other dog was fine. Not even a scratch on the dog. Um, and of course, like, again, my dog was on the leash walking down the road. Um, the other dog just completely darted off. And again, it's the other dog's, um, not fault. It's the other owner's dog's fault. Um, so anyway, the point is this is things happen. I used to be an animal control officer. I used to go to court and, um, work with dogs, uh, you know, in court systems. And I know the majority of the laws <laughs> and, you know, your dog is a piece of property. And if you let it off leash and it goes after another dog, um, uh, granted, these things happen. So, and I understand that more than probably anybody. Uh, we deal with people's uh, kids every single day, and uh, we we care for a lot of a lot of dogs on a regular basis. So we know how important it is uh, to to make sure that dogs are safe and healthy, and and everyone's where they need to be. But we also understand that they're dogs, they're animals. Things happen all the time. So um, I just want to talk about how to break up a fight really quick. So again, I wouldn't recommend what I do by putting your head uh, right where it was. But again, my dog just latched on, was like, what the heck? What, what is going on? Who are you? What, you know, and again, like you get an older dog that's intact on a walk at night. It's, it's going to happen almost every time. And again, it's none of the dog's faults, but I just wanted to talk about um, what you could do as a dog owner if, if this happens to you. So pulling the back legs out is really important. So not not the hind legs, like you're not going to grab where the where basically the legs meet the body. You're going to grab their feet, pull them straight out. And this will, uh, this will make the dog uh, let go almost nine times out of 10. So that's what we did. Uh, we just pulled the dog's back legs out, um, you know, having a daycare and having 35, 40 dogs run around, things happen, squalls happen, dogs are dogs. The more that we understand that things are gonna happen and they're gonna get bumps and little fights and whatever, the more that we know these things, uh, the less likely we're gonna be let down because dogs are dogs at the end of the day. So, um, but pulling the back legs out by the feet is the first step and then just disengaging the dog. And like I said, the other dog was completely fine. The owners were like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. 
my fault, um, totally. And it's like, oh no, it's, it's, it's no worries. You know, exactly. I, I know exactly, you know, where you're coming from. I know that these things happen. Um, and that's something to understand too. I, I think I want you guys to take a deep breath, blow it out and just say, look, um, you know, that happened. Or if these things happen, just say dogs are dogs. Your, your little kid, you can think about differently, but at the same time, they make mistakes too. They go and they punch a kid in the face for stealing their toy or um, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah, Adam, that's right. Wheel bearing. Um, wheel, wheel barrowing. Um, but things happen. Uh, but at the end of the day, we also have to understand that dogs are animals with teeth and they primitively, primally will do things to protect themselves in a vulnerable state. Or they're just like, hey, I don't like you, bam. I'm not going to kill you. I don't want to kill you. I don't necessarily even want to hurt you. I just want to tell you, like, bop you in the nose really quick. Get the heck away. Dogs do that with their teeth. Wham. Uh, so anyway, so that happened. And that's, like, the easiest way to break up a dog fight. Um, and again, like, those are, like, some really bad scenarios. Random dog comes jumping off of a, uh, a uh, you know, a, a what you call it. And, and like I said, nobody was hurt. There was no blood, no scratches. The other dog was like, hey, well, you know, let's play again. Like, uh, you know, who knows what the other dog was doing. Um, but these things happen. So I want to just let you know, it's okay. If you're, and the other thing I want to let you know is um, my, my St. Bernard, again, he is under control. He is e-collar trained. Uh, he is always on a, on a leash, but I can't, I can't control what other dogs do. And that's my next point is uh, when, when you go to places like dog parks, which I've talked about before, you can't control what the other dog owners are going to do, which means you don't have the means to successfully understand and um, manage all of the other dogs and what they want to do. Um, but, uh, moving forward, go to places that, you know, your, your neighborhood should be one of those places, but there's a lot of times I, I hear a lot of people walking down the neighborhood and an off leash dog comes running at you. It could be an aggressive dog. It could be a friendly dog, but at the same time, maybe your dog is not friendly or maybe your dog is not, uh, so nice. And that's completely okay. I want you guys to understand being a professional myself and helping thousands of people with their dogs. My dog doesn't care for other dogs. He doesn't go out of his way to attack them. He doesn't run after them every time he sees one by any means. He doesn't even bark at them. He doesn't even look at them. But if a random strange dog approaches him, he has a problem with that. And that's completely okay. And it's completely fair to the dog to give them their personal space that they need. Um, so there's a couple uh, items I want to talk about that you guys can use uh, when a dog approaches or if it's something that happens on a regular basis. Um, you know, calling your animal control. Uh, the, the best thing to do, honestly, is just finding the owner of the dog to say, hey, look, every single time I walk down, um, you know, Fifth Street, your dog comes at me like, you know, I don't want any problems. Can you please, 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 please keep your dog like in your yard or whatever. Sometimes dog owners don't even know that their dogs are wandering around. Um, when we used to get a lot of calls, um, I'd work the state police and they'd say, hey, we got a dog running around. A lot of times people didn't even know their dog was gone. Um, so the first thing to do is if it's something that's habitual and happening a lot, talk to the dog owners and say, hey, look, um, this isn't this isn't OK. I don't want your dog to be hit by a car. Hi, Tori. I don't want um, I don't I don't want these. You know, I don't want anything to happen. Um, and then the other thing that you can do is I don't have it with me because I left it in my van. But you can get a little tool. And it's called Doggy Don't, which is literally like a little, uh, it's like a little noise machine. Uh, you can get it on Amazon, D-O-G-G-I-E, Don't. Um, and literally it just does that and uh, it, it deters the dog from coming after you. If it's something that happens on a regular basis and you have a smaller dog and it's potentially dangerous, you can use things like pepper spray or any kind of deterrent spray, bear spray. Um, because at the end of the day, again, um, if a dog's coming at you and it could potentially kill or really, really hurt your dog, that dog is going to be in really big trouble. Um, and your dog could potentially, you know, get really injured. So using bear spray or using pepper spray is very minimal, uh, compared to what could actually happen and, you know, the bills that could rack up and the devastation and things like that. Um, so you have to do what you have to do, but spray, like if you carry around a baseball bat or something, some people will say, I just care. I'm like, that doesn't matter. Dogs don't care about that. They're animals. They'll run right through a, a whack of the head. They don't care. But the turns like, uh, the pepper spray and stuff, cause their senses is, are so, so, um, sensitive. Um, and then like, uh, the, the doggy don't is really good too. I carry that around with me all the time. Um, so anyway, guys, I just wanted to hop on here and let you know we were ambushed last night and it sucked. Uh, and I wanted to just say hello to everybody here on YouTube. And I appreciate you guys so much. We're growing like crazy. 
Um, and I'm so grateful for that. And I can't wait to continue to, to help you guys out as dog owners. And um, that's what I that's what I figured. I said, hey, this thing happened. I want to let you guys know that it's okay that these things happen. Uh, dogs are dogs. It's not the end of the world. Relax. Take a deep breath. Um, but here are some things. I'll list them down below uh, as well um, of like the doggy don and things like that. The Great Dane is doing fantastic. Um, he's doing really good. Um, his training is doing good. So he's doing good and we'll be happy to send a, a, an updated video here in a couple weeks. Um, but yes, that's, that's a good one, bird lady. The other thing, I think it's bird lady. The other thing that I do sometimes too is if I'm in an area I do not know, I will carry an extra leash with me. Um, I did forget about that, so thank you for that. Um, basically what I do is uh, put a leash on me, like you guys have seen in my other videos, and I'll put my dogs into a downstay if I see a dog approaching, and I'll just leash the dog up and walk away with it. Um, so that's the other really great reason of having you know, e-collar on your dog to make sure that you can, if you can stop a fight by saying, hey, downstay, and then getting the dog uh, leashed up and walking it back to its owners or uh, you know, giving it to somebody else so uh, there's no fight or there's no altercation. So anyway, thank you guys so much for, for watching. Uh, do me a, please do me a favor, uh, like this video. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. And uh, we're going to be giving away some No Bad Dogs merch this week. So make sure that you turn on your bell notifications next to the subscription button. So when I go live, you guys know. Uh, and we're going to be doing uh, some, some giveaways with the No Bad Dog stuff. So um, anyway, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. I'll talk to you guys in the comments here after the video. And again, thank you so very much for being a part of the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. Hello, France. Bye-bye, guys.